any successful trader will tell you that the essence to trading success is going to be where you can find a good trading system that you can adopt, understand money management, and most importantly trading psychology and probably least discussed and least considered important by the uh, the retail the amateur trader so if we're going to become professional at this if we're going to become successful at this we really need to understand trading psychology and one of my key realizations about that was uh, when I interviewed some of the world's leading traders and I want to discuss in this short presentation uh, those secret elements of trading psychology which were the absolute essence to what made the world's leading trader successful and actually what laid, made me successful enough in trading to start my own asset management company so let me progress with that uh, I interviewed some of the world's leading traders when I decided I wanted to trade full-time for myself I thought I would better meet some of the world's greatest traders and I interviewed them for a book published by the Financial Times called called the mind of a trader uh, uh, and in this book, individuals such as the chairman of the Chicago Board of Trade, the world's largest exchange, were uh, were good enough to critically acclaim the book and praise its strategies and methodology. So I want you to know what the source of information I'm giving you is. It's not just generic blurb. Uh, this is based on detailed first-hand interviews with the world's leading traders and uh, then verified as to the quality of the information given by people such as uh, Pat Arbor. So, uh, the, as I say, the quality of the information and data then led me on to uh, produce content which was, uh, well, outshone Harry, Harry Potter for a while, though they didn't turn my book into a movie. Uh, and I I talk about trading psychology amongst other things uh, on uh, various media channels as you can see there uh, uh, which uh, it, it is why as I say it's the trading psychology which allows me to be ranked in places such as the Financial Times as the number one uh, forecaster so uh, what is it well let me give you one element Jesse Livermore uh, once a, vi a, a book called Reminiscences of a Stock Operator after spending many years in Wall Street and after making and losing millions of dollars I want to tell you this it never was my thinking that made big money for me it was always my sitting got that sitting tight sitting tight you might think he's talking about having a system which tells him when to get in and out actually he's talking a lot more about psychology what are the elements of psychology I'm going to discuss well one of them is how to handle those inevitable losing trades it's our inability to handle losing trades that leads us to make even bigger losses more losses take greater risk and give up on trading the trouble with a loss is it's not only the loss of money but also loss of ego said Pat Arbor chairman of the Chicago Board of Trade this is not just some some Greek philosopher speaking this is actually a trader one of the world's most successful traders telling us uh, uh, or in terms of ego as Einstein put it more knowledge um, means less ego and that's what I want to give you I want to give you more lo knowledge so that your ego and the ability to um, take a loss uh, uh, change your uh, which makes you more successful as a trader how do we go about this well we all know that one key way of course and I discussed this in other uh, video recordings is to have a very systematic approach to losses to make sure that you know where you stand with losses uh, I often say you should only lose the most two percent on any one trade two percent of your overall trading capital and I said money management I talk about in a separate discussion but there that's one particular way you have this rule you will preserve your profits you will not lose more than two percent and you will stick to that rule that's not really the problem very often though with people it's not just knowing the rule the issue is how do we persevere with rules on losses that we have to take our losses we have to keep them small that's the first two percent of your overall capital we have to keep them small uh, and love our small losses but also uh, ensuring that we do follow through with that how do we ensure we do have that miserly mentality so that it comes naturally to us how do we go about 
and I guess the key way in which we do that is using every psychological trick that we can think of. What are those psychological tricks? Well, let me just uh, tell you one. First of all, the leading traders of the world told me, learn to love your small losses. Well, what does that mean? If we understand, as Einstein put it, if we have more knowledge, then we'll have less of an ego. If we understand that losses are inevitable, but if we keep them small because we have something like the 2% rule, so that we're never going to lose more than 2% of our capital, then we can learn to love them because we now know, well, that's just part and parcel of the system. I've kept them small. So we change our entire perspective. Our perspective isn't, oh, God, I had another loss, I had another loss. Our perspective becomes, great, I had a small loss, so I'm doing something right. I've enforced my discipline. This is good. I don't like it. It's painful, but it's good that I've done it. It's a bit like going to the gym. Uh, I don't like it. I don't enjoy it. But I know it's good. I've got another session out of the way. This image, by the way, for those who haven't seen my videos on money management, this image shows of one of the world's leading traders, Bill Lipschitz, former global head of foreign exchange at Salomon Brothers when Warren Buffett was the chairman at that organization, uh, who I interviewed, by the way, for, for my book. So this is first-hand uh, performance records of, of him and of his hedge fund. The number of months on this, the vertical axis, uh, and the percentage of losses that they had uh, in any of those months. Uh, so 0 to 1 percent losses, 0 to 1 percent losses was on about 42, uh, 42 months. So you can see, but what you also see very clearly is those losses were uh, relatively small. Those losses, as you can see, whilst there were lots of them, uh, at zero to one, uh, so there were lots, as you can see, they were relatively small because there were zero to one percent. And in actual fact, there were no heartbreaking losses around twenty uh, percent, or ten percent, or nine percent, or eight percent, and so on. So they'd learnt to love their small losses. They were doing something right. The psychology and the perspective of everything was, hey, we got a small loss. That's great. Our system's going to have losses. We kept it small. We did what was right. Psychologists will talk to you about framing and about perspective. That's all these top traders did. They knew about these things which are so often ignored and neglected by other traders because everyone thinks, oh, it's just about a system. I want my system always to be right, never to have any losses. It's just idiotic to think that. Well, the important thing is that those losses must be small. If you look at it, they're, they're, and this is one of the world's leading traders, they know their losses are going to be inevitable, but they kept them small and that perspective. This is in actual fact what happens to most traders. They in fact end up in a situation where they're just frantically drinking coffee and trading, watching CNBC, reading every single newspaper, have no systematic approach and are not in control of their emotions. Discipline and market psychology is about avoiding those emotions. When you are emotional, these are the errors you make. As the market rises in share price, you get doubt and suspicion, caution, you get a bit of confidence, you get enthusiasm, you wait so long, you buy at that point, then you get greedy, and because of that you get denial, concern, fear, and panic. You only sell at panic, so you end up buying high, selling low, and making a loss. And that is all psychology. It's not just about having a bad system. A good system will actually make sure that this doesn't happen as long as you have the psychological bent to make sure you follow it. And probably the thing that I liken the most this to, uh, and it occurred to me, is the similarity between the world's top traders that I met and interviewed and psychology of great athletes. For athletes, and feel free to pause this at any time and look at this, uh, uh, and with all of these uh, top traders, they had certain characteristics in common. And I'm going to go through each one of them. Professional athletes, and you could say this about traders, um, just work as hard as they possibly can, of course, and that drive is propelled by intense passion for what they're doing. They love the trade. It wasn't just about, oh, I want to make money, I want to just win medals. Those came naturally because they love every aspect of trade. They looked at it and the education and the reading of manuals and the following of share prices as or foreign exchange prices or whatever else is yeah, I really want to enjoy this. I want to be part of this. They paused. They think about it and think, why do I want to do this? There was the deliberate act of decision making. It was that self-motivation, the ability to say, and the use of psychological skills to say, right, 
how can I how can I excel at this become the best at this because I want to and you can see uh, all of these top athletes you'll have heard top athletes talking about psychology you never hear traders talking about psychology so much unless as I say you've met them you know exactly what they're doing so there was the deliberate act of decision making I shall be great at this I will achieve greatness at this I will pursue it until I do there was the confidence that came with it that I know if I continue learning about this do everything that ought to be done as well as of course having faith having that desire removing all doubt and expect to win and persevere through it I will simply be successful and that's how it was now again I say how do you think these why how and why do you think these top athletes talk about psychology well traders do the same any profession which requires hard work and a skill is going to be the same and it's exactly the same with trading and these are exactly the kinds of things that the world's top traders would talk about this is what they have to do there was also a great degree of calmness people think the markets are just oh it must be really emotional have you noticed how calm um, athletes are before a major uh, Olympic bout or a, or a tennis match or a fight it was the same with trading there wasn't the whoa yeah I made loads of money and all of that with with trading there was actually a way of managing uh, uh, managing stress and staying cool under pressure and they knew there'd be sources of uh, stress such as losses but they also knew to learn to love their small losses and have a plan to handle those losses make sure they had a money management rule and a system that's what allowed them to be calm they knew then in perspective of course I'm going to get injuries or losses uh, but those will come and those will go and that calmness allows them to think clearly allowed them to execute their plan with discipline the effects of stress on performance was and they knew this was the other reason they had to be calm was they knew it would be physically damaging emotionally and psychologically and would lead to things like choking when it came to trading and poor decision making when it came to trading as well as in athletics so the same mentality that the world's leading traders would talk about I will remain calm because I know that's the only way I can make money it wasn't just the system I know the psychology is important for me to make money the focus the focus they knew the end goal and everything else didn't matter so they knew I have to learn the techniques that I'm being taught I know or as the, one of the best ones don't quit suffer now and live the rest of your life as a champion as as, as Muhammad Ali put it uh, 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 and that focus was essential that concentration it wasn't oh there's an easy shortcut oh, I'll just copy this that was just the starting point and all of that led them then to continue to spend their time focusing internally not just in front of a computer screen when they were trading or an athlete not just on a football pitch but getting that emotional strength to ensure that they could be in control of their emotions that that passion remained it's not just that you're just how many hours you spend on the football pitch or the tennis court or in front of the computer trading but it's how do you get that emotional strength just putting your mind to it thinking about it how will I stay enthusiastic about this because I know what the end goal is and I know there'll be some small losses and I will overcome them and one of the ways in which to do that was just to isolate to actually take time out I know as a trader I look to do that uh, as well and of course if you don't do what you're supposed to do then definitely be hypercritical of your standards and the reason to be hypercritical of those standards is because you know what the goals are and you can't just say oh well it doesn't matter it doesn't matter you know what you've got to do otherwise you're just wasting time otherwise actually repeat mistakes you won't learn it in one go so you didn't keep up with your stop loss you didn't exit when you should have done you didn't do the homework you didn't read the manual properly keep on repeating it until you learn the lesson turn every negative into a positive ignore consensus sounds obvious uh, uh, we always talk about that in terms of the market but in actual fact uh, ignoring consensus just meant you're going to do this you know what the right way is you've been taught it make sure you do it that way that's what ignoring consensus is and always thinking ahead plotting and scheming well you've got the latest technology you've got an algorithm system whatever it is you're gonna plot 
how to get ahead, how to win in the market because you know what the end goal and the end result will be, that you will succeed based on all the things that I mentioned, not just what athletes do, but what top traders do. So that you are then left, and feel free to pause on this last slide, you are left with all the elements of success we always hear in every other aspect of life, but we forget in trading, this is the case as well. It's absolutely the case as well. We need all of these things in order to succeed. Feel free to print the screen even, grab it and print it. It is exactly the same issue. It is not going to be, oh, I just did this, and oh, bang, look at that. The cash machine just kept on ringing. It is going to take uh, the same levels of skill and self-analysis so that with the psychology, you are focused, you persevere, you're determined, you take the time to learn, you take the critical analysis in isolation to say, right, how do I remain enthusiastic? What are the benefits of me taking small losses? What are the benefits of me pursuing this? And visualize, visualize that end goal of being joining the community of traders and being successful and working from wherever you wish. That is why it's worth it. And it's exactly the same parallels in sport. And that's why I wanted to give you that analogy.